Hello everybody, welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling. I'm going to be walking you through some more basic drawing techniques and we're going to be looking at something a little different this week. I'm really excited about the content we're going to be showing you, but first I do want to remind everyone who's watching that all of these videos, including past videos that were used during what's called the Art Gallery Workshop, are available for you online, um, free and open and ready for you to watch and use and and consume there on the holler.org. So visit that website. Now once you go to that website, you're going to see a lot of different options on where you can go. Look for the Art Gallery Workshop. What that's going to do is going to open you up and enable you to go ahead and uh, see those videos, access those videos, and things of that nature. Okay? I want to thank Pike TV and the holler.org for uh, sponsoring and actually making this uh, workshop possible. They believe in giving opportunities for our region, for you, the viewer, um, uh, that will hopefully help you. If you're interested in art, basic drawing, then this is the place for you to go. There's lots of careers in this, and, and, and uh, you don't have to work for Disney, Marvel, or DC Comics to have a great career with illustration and cartooning and art. So hopefully, if you're interested in this stuff, um, use those resources on theholler.org and uh, use the art workshop here as uh, a building block. Last, uh, last time we looked at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was uh, a really fun uh, episode, but this week I wanted to focus on something more cartoon based. And the reason for that is cartooning it, it, it by nature is, is simple lines being placed in a certain order to uh, generate or uh, shoot for a certain effect, okay? No matter what your favorite cartoon characters are or what you enjoy looking at, every single one of those is, can be broken down into simple shapes. And we went over that using the Marvel method. Now the content we're going to be looking at this week, some of you will know this, some of you won't. It's one of those things where um, it's well known amongst people who have heard about it and read it, but if, you've, if you don't, you've probably not even heard about this, but Jeff Smith is a cartoonist. He attended uh, The Ohio State University, and while he was there, he actually um, did cartoons, editorial cartoons, which we'll go over at some point what that is, but he worked on editorial cartoons for the student newspaper at the Ohio State University. Um, upon leaving, he did a bunch of different things, but if you notice, um, this is probably his greatest achievement. Uh, this is called Bone, and uh, this is the largest graphic novel, and graphic novels basically what that means is a big comic book um, that's ever been produced. I think the second one to this is Craig Thompson's Blankets, but um, this, this is um, a uh, fantasy-based type of um, work. If you like Lord of the Rings, you would love Bone. Uh, the characters in there are pretty simple. We're going to be looking at one of those today, Phone Bone, which is one of the main characters from Jess Smith's Bone. Okay. Now, uh, the materials, we're going to go over that really fast here today. Um, so far, for the first two general episodes for the art workshop, we're using simple supplies. Pencil, you can use a, an H uh, pencil or a 2B, 2H, 2B, or whatever it is, a mechanical pencil, um, eraser, and then ink. Now, ink comes in different forms. We showed you this last time. This is a little bottle of India ink here. You can apply India ink using various methods. One is a brush. This is what all the cartoonists use. Jeff Smith produced his entire work using a brush, dipping it in ink. Another way to go about it is what's called a nib pen. Now, nib pens are basically used in calligraphy a lot but there are cartooning nib pens and these slide out and the, re um, the cool thing about this is that you don't have to keep buying pens over and over and they never run out because there's no reservoir of, of uh, ink in this pen. This pen actually is used to dip down in a bottle of ink and then you apply the ink that way. Um, for the purpose of today's inking I'm going to be using a Pentel brush pen. This has replaceable cartridges inside of it so if you um, were to run out of ink, you can buy a cartridge to go in. All of these pens that I've shown you today can be found at your local hobby store or online. Uh, just search for those and huge uh, um, options will pop up, many options will pop up for you to purchase some of these supplies uh, right there from, from your own home. Okay, so what we're going to do first is, is a little different. We're going to be taking a look here on the screen using the digital tablet. That's another one of our resources um, we're going to be using but we're going to look and see exactly how Jeff Smith put together his characters. Now, if you notice here, um, I've brought up the bone character so you can see it and um, brought it up on the screen. So 
the bone character is a pretty sim simply um, designed uh, character. Um, they almost look a little bit um, like the early um, Donald Duck type stuff from Disney. Uh, however, there are some uh, differences. The characters are completely white. When this book was first produced, it was in black and white. Now, if you're familiar at all with the workshop in this television uh, show, you're familiar with what we've called the Marvel Method. We've talked about that almost every episode. Um, what the Marvel Method is, is a, um, a technique that you use in drawing, in basic drawing, especially when you're drawing human forms or forms of an, that use anatomy, head, shoulders, feet, body parts, uh, how those things are placed together. That's one of the hardest things that I've noticed young artists have uh, the, the trouble with is drawing using uh, drawing anatomy and things of that nature. So I want you to pay attention here though to, um, uh, to this um, drawing in, in terms of how Jeff put it together, okay? Let's take a look here. First we have circle, look for circles. We have a circle here. There's a circle or oval shape here. The body makes up an oval. We have ovals for the arm, okay? We'll draw circles starting out for the hands here and here. And then we also have these oval shapes for the legs. And the leg is bent and a little oval shape here. And then, of course, the oval for the feet. Now, you can see these are all simple shapes that are pulled together to create the look of bone. Now, this is phone bone, one of the characters from the, from the book. Um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to uh, zoom out here, and we're going to create those ovals separately down below, and we're going to draw phone bone um, here for you on the screen. Now you follow along with me at home. I want you to um, um, draw as I draw, put the, make the marks as I make the marks, and at the end we should have hopefully uh, the framework together to, to draw the bone character. The first thing we're going to start out is the large circle that makes up the top portion of foam bone's head. Now again, you're going to sketch this with pencil. So you've got paper in front of you. Um, I encourage you to go ahead and follow along with me there at home. The circle does not have to be perfect. You know, you could sketch it out, just sketch out these things. Don't worry so much about having a perfect circle drawn or the detail. Now the two circles I made up top here is just to show you the, how, what I mean by sketching that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another oval shape here. And you can tell from where I went ahead and uh, marked on the, the character earlier that we're at this portion of, of the uh, process, the nose portion right there. So here's the nose. This is the large circle that makes up the uh, uh, foam bones uh, head here. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead now and work on the body. See this oval here? So we're going to draw this in. Keep in mind whenever you're drawing to look back um, occasionally, often even, at whatever it is you're drawing. Make sure that you're following along what's called symmetry. It's a really big fancy word for keeping things in order in relation to the other parts. So you can see by looking up here at the foam bone character, this oval has a slant to it that goes like this. See the slant to the tip of the toe up to the head, this line, the imaginary line right here, okay? And we're following that imaginary line right here with their character as well, okay? All right, so let's get rid of those uh, marks I just made so we can have a clean surface and continue. Uh, the next line we're going to make is going to be, or shape we're going to make, is the oval up here that makes up the upper arm. Now you'll notice whenever you're putting your works together, you're going to have these ovals overlap a little bit. You can see how that overlaps there. Now so far these circles, we have one, two, three, four circles. Those circles look nothing like the foam bone character, but that's okay. These are supposed to be used as a guide. That's it, okay? You notice up here his thumb is overlapping. This is a map. So let's go ahead and draw a circle to where, where the thumb will be in that area, okay? Now let's focus on the oval shape for the arm. The arm extends all the way out, so we're going to take it. Notice where it, where, it ex, where it actually begins. It begins about right here on this big oval. So this oval we've drawn for the body, that oval for the arm starts about right there. Okay, so these are the things you have to pay attention to. Although the Marvel method helps individuals to achieve a certain look for their drawings, 
If you don't pay attention to those little things like this, like where a certain shape starts and stops, they won't help you really that much at all in the end, okay? All right, so now let's focus on the legs. The legs are bent. Here we have an oval shape that goes to the knee. So let's draw that one out. It goes to the knee out here, about right there, okay? We have another oval shape that goes out to that knee, and this one actually extends forward. It's gonna be about right there. We have um, the knee portion, like we said, this one, this knee's bent, so let's draw a circle for that one. This one's extended, there's the circle for that knee. Now we have the portion of the leg that folds back underneath itself there. This leg is bent, like I said, so draw that oval there. This one is extended, it goes down, so let's draw this one here. Now we have the feet. Now the feet are pretty big, so what we're gonna do is just draw one big gigantic oval shape that's gonna make up the foot, okay? So it's gonna be like this right here. If you notice um, on the screen here, um, the circle that makes up the head, if you look at Foam Bone's head and you compare that with his feet, his feet are about one half the size of this large portion of his head. They're pretty big. So keep these things in, in, in mind as you're going along. Now we're going to add another circle here for his foot, which is about right there. The other foot is extending out. It's pretty big, so make sure and keep that in mind. So there's the general shape for foam bone. Now, of course, he has this uh, backpack on. We're going to add that on in a little bit. Um, but right now, I want us to focus on the general shape for the body and make sure that we have all those things in relation to one another. Okay? All right, so now we're going to head now from here. And um, if you want to, we'll go ahead and add the book bag on. The book bag is um, an oval shape at the top, and then it comes down like this at the bottom. And it's, of course, strapped on his arm there, okay? All right, oops. <laughs> All right, so now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start filling in these circles. Now, as you can see, I've already drawn out. Um, circles that we'll use a little bit earlier. Um, here's the circles that I, I just finished a minute ago. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and use the circles that I've drawn out before we started and we're going to start filling in these gaps, okay? So now from here you want to still use your pencil. You don't want to use um, you don't want to use pen yet. You're still adding the detail in. But I'm going to be using black on the computer to show you where to add detail. At the end, you'll ink this, okay? So now let's go ahead and start filling in our lines. So we're going to take this around his head. It's kind of hard to make uh, circular shapes with the tablet. I'm still getting used to it, but I'm going to try to do my best I can here for you. It's going to go down, okay? Now here's the nose portion. It goes up out and back in sort of like that okay and like I said it's a sort of different using the tablet but we'll we will do the best we can all right this line goes up over and back in so there's the nose portion now we have the arm that extends up here notice how I'm following the lines that I've already created using that Marvel method okay his thumb actually comes down on the map right here. And then it comes up and you can see how he's holding the map. Now we'll go down to the um, portion of his back that uh, has the strap for the uh, book bag going over his shoulder here. And there's that. We have a, a gold ring here, I guess, connecting the uh, backpack to the, uh, the, sh the strap to the backpack. Now we have a uh, flap up here for the backpack. And here's the other side. Okay. Here's the opening to the backpack. So this would be colored in later a little bit. All right. The backpack actually folds in. Remember, uh, if you watched last time, I talked about fabric. I talked about how to draw um, or keep in mind when you're drawing fabric, how fabric folds on itself. There's shapes to fabric. Fabric's not always um, flat. All right, so let's draw the body coming down like this. And now we have the knee. So there's the knee up to the body. All right, we got this shape right here that goes over to the other leg. The knee actually bends down underneath like this with a line for the knee, I mean. The foot's going to come back. It's going to come out. And you're going to make this really large shape here. Let's try that again. 
and a large shape for the foot out here. So it's going to come down and then back and up into his leg like that. See? Now when you're following along and you're using this method, once you've uh, put in all the detail like this, it's going to be really simple a little bit later uh, to um, uh, go in and ink over this. Now this comes down and his other foot of course is going to come out like this and down something like that and we have that part and this is going to go up into his body here now go back up to his head and he has this uh, line for a um, eyebrow another one up here and then his eyes he's let's do his mouth first he's smiling and his eyes are actually looking at the map we have one here and one here. So you can see how that looks. So we have everything but the arm. So let's bring the arm out. He's holding on to the map. Let's try this again here. There we go. The arm's coming out from the body like that. Follow your lines that you've used to, to guide yourself. These circles and ovals. His thumb coming out like this. Down. And then his hand holding the map like this. So there we go. We have used the Marvel method to draw Jeff Smith's bone character. This is Phone Bone uh, from the, um, the book Bone. Okay. So if you followed along with me and you'd like to share your version of Phone Bone or any of the uh, characters from Jeff Smith's Bone, send those to me on the holler.org. I'd love to see what you came up with. Um, I'll even show your artwork right here on the art workshop along with uh, your name and, and uh, give you credit for the great job you did, which I'm sure you've done. So we'll go ahead and draw the map in here to give you an idea of how that fits into the picture. So we have the map here, and there we go. All right. I hope you've enjoyed um, watching along on this section. Uh, we'll try it now on paper and see how well you do with the, uh, with the examples given there. Okay? All right. Now supplies are very important no matter I guess what it is you're working on but I do want to stress to you that you do not need anything fancy or over the top uh, in order to produce the content that we're sharing here with you. Just a 2B pencil, 2H pencil, eraser, and even a Sharpie. That's what I started out with. But um, for the purpose of what we're going to do now, we're going to um, first, as always, start out with pencil. And the one I'm using here is a mechanical pencil. Um, like I said though, you don't need this stuff in order to produce it. Um, no matter what you start out with, when you're coming into doing actual settings and characters in movement and poses, you want to be sure and look at how those characters are set up. The Marvel method works great for whatever it is you're drawing, but it's only going to be uh, applied to whatever the content is you're looking at. So if you're using it for characters setting down, think about how those shapes come together to form the body posture. Uh, and look, look how... Um, um, the characters relate to one another in terms of their um, positioning with um, perspective. Those things all can be accessed, if you don't know what I'm talking about, by going to theholler.org and looking at those videos that are available to you. Okay. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to put ink onto the actual drawing. Again, you don't have to follow those shapes to, um, um, to a T. You can diverge a little bit. You can put shapes in that you need to put put in that you did not have earlier using the framework that you laid out. As you notice I'm inking the foreground um, elements completely black for shading. Use solid um, uh, black with, with some of these elements when you shade it, it adds to the, um, uh, the overall composition of the drawing. I'm using a thinner pen now to actually put in the thinner lines. Lines that are closer to you they're going to be thicker than what's in the background. Um, so keep that in mind whenever you're drawing. Now, erasing when you're finished also with all your pencil lines. But wait till they dry. All right, so that finishes up the quick sketch for the bone characters. And as you can see, they, they, it, comes out, it comes out pretty good, especially when you add your character to a specific world um, or setting. And we talked about this a little bit. Um, be careful whenever you're doing that, though. Uh, pay attention when you're using the Marvel method for those circles because, as you can see, um, uh, what we did for the character down here at the bottom, setting downs in a different position, so put the circles and ovals in there appropriately, okay? Um, I want everyone to try this at home. Google search some bone characters. There's all sorts of different types and kinds. 
Try this method, draw your own character, send it to me on the holler.org. You can see your creation right here on the art workshop on Pike TV if you do, okay? It's really important um, to me that, that, that this is available to you to use, and I hope you use it. I want to see uh, what you've, you've done and what you've created. Um, always put uh, effort into it with the Marvel method, and whatever you try to, kind of cre try to create, uh, you'll see that using that framework to go by is really going to help. Okay? All right. Here's another example of how to use the Marvel method when you're drawing characters in movement or in some sort of action. Actually, here we're doing two different separate characters, and you can see how those uh, uh, relate to one another. I started out drawing out the entire figure first, adding the detail still in pencil. Um, the second character that you see, um, we'll be putting those in here in a minute. But the line down the face helps to guide where the features will be, uh, the nose, the eyes in relation to the mouth. Now, overlapping things, as you can see, there's four arms here. There's two characters, so you want to kind of keep in mind as you're drawing these shapes in where exactly um, the shapes are in relation to another. One character's arm is overlapping the, uh, the other, uh, so if you can see, I left that out when I was adding in the detail. When you go back and you're inking, you're going to want to be able to tell exactly what it is you're tracing over. Uh, when you get into using too many shapes at once, you're going to notice that this can complicate things. So keep in mind when you're drawing two characters together that you should always be able to differentiate where one begins and the other ends. Okay, for this quick sketch, uh, you can see that placing your characters in environments really makes a difference, but it also uh, creates an equal challenge for creating your characters using that Marvel method. You've got to shape those ovals in certain ways to get a certain feel or look, but uh, it's challenging, but at the same time, it's very doable. So continue to use that technique, try different things, search out your own cartoons to go by to reference, and uh, uh, try out the Marvel method and see how it works for you. Now again, I do want to mention how wonderful this is as a resource um, available to you from Pike TV and theholler.org, but it is your opportunity to make it um, work even more for you in terms of becoming interactive with us. So you get onto theholler.org, go to the Art Gallery Workshop, click on that link, send me your artwork if you want to see your own creations shared here on the Art Workshop. I really appreciate you tuning in today. Remember, tune in um, each, each week for a, a new episode and um, keep drawing and send in your work. I want to see what you come up with, all right? Thanks a lot. I'm Christopher Epling, and as always, keep drawing.